birthday is always a great day to reflect on the year that has passed. To see God's faithfulness, God's grace, God's mercy, and to thank Him for it before we look at the year to come. And today, Lesecho and I are going to do exactly that for Fellowship City. Now look, I know that you guys are not the Philippians, and I know that we are not Paul. But Paul writes to the Philippians in uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6, and he says, I give thanks to my God for every remembrance of you. Always praying with joy for all of you in my every prayer because of your partnership in the gospel. Isn't that a beautiful line? From this day, from the first day until now. I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. We feel this way about the church today as we look back on the year we've had. We want to celebrate what God is doing in and through our church. And we thought it'll be an awesome idea to share with you what happened over the past year and why we feel the way we feel. As we started the year, we believe God was giving us a vision, a vision that will carry us for the next three to five years. That vision was seeing God's kingdom come by transformed lives in and through his transcultural church. Mm -hmm. So everything, all the programs of the church, all the ministries of the church would have to submit to this vision that we believe God entrusted us with. Mm -hmm. um, that meant we were calling our people to particular things. We we're calling our people to prioritize Sunday services. We we're calling our people to join and participate and encounter spaces. We believe we needed to create spaces in which people would come to meet and encounter God and therefore be transformed by that. Uh, we created encounter worship spaces where we saw lots of people come together to worship God and to meet and encounter God in meaningful ways. We created an encounter weekend, which was a space or a weekend where people could deal with specific mm. things that were stopping them from meeting and encountering God. So we were excited in the beginning of the year and we were very challenged in the beginning of the year. We were really excited for all of our ministry programs planned out. We were excited that Jake and Rochelle joined our staff mm. team. We were excited to see what God is going to do through our ministry programs. And we were really challenged when it came to finances. So in the beginning of the year, we stood in front of the church as your elders and we said, listen, if we look at the available money we have, and we look at our monthly income and we look at our monthly expenses, we are going to run out of money soon. If we just look at it based on reality or on financial facts or numbers, as it were. We say to you, we're not losing sleep over it. We are trusting God that he'll provide for us. And we are also trusting God that our people will grow in generosity. And fam, let me tell you, God has been faithful. Through the course of this year, we gave you frequent feedback. We always call that a giving plug. And we release a video after we've given a giving plug um, during a Sunday service so that everyone has all the information. But the long story short about our finances is that God has given us everything we needed up to this point in the year. And for that, we praise Him. We received um, more income from our people as they generously gave, which we are thankful for. And I mean, every giving plug, we praise God for it. And he opened up a door for us to enter into a partnership with a church in America called Resonate. And through that partnership, uh, they have also generously sown into our ministry, which has enabled us to do the ministry that God has called us to do. We could even use that money to uh, expand our staff team even more because as our ministries grow, our staff team needs to grow because our responsibilities grow. And that's a phenomenal challenge to have. We could also spend some of the money we received on creating extra ministry spaces, which he will tell you all about now. Why do we create these spaces? Because we want people to encounter God. And creating these spaces also asks for our resources. And uh, we needed money and we got the money that we needed. And for that, we praise God. And all of these ministry spaces that, that were birthed in this time or were developed in this time all sat under one hanger, our discipleship journey. Yeah. So what is God calling us to? God is calling us to make disciples who make disciples. That's why all the programs then submit to this main thing. So how do we know we're making disciples who make disciples? We need to see people loving God and loving people. So we focus our teaching and focus calling people to commit to particular spaces, to commit to serving, to commit to being part of the fellowship of the church, and commit towards the mission of the church as we spoke about our vision. Mm -hmm. Some of that commitment included committing to the ministry spaces that we have here at Fellowship City. We saw a, a large growth in many of our ministries and started new ministries. Our children discipleship, for one, we're very thankful for all of our ambassadors who form part of this team. 
we started the year with one class that was 30 kids in one class mm. we shortly saw that we needed to open up a new class and the leadership of this of this ministry was able to help to to start a new class we had the lions and the cubs as two separate classes then shortly after we realized we needed another class we needed to open the preteens <laughs> class so we started the year with one class then we we at the end of the year with three classes and we see the need to start another class um, it may be called the leopards so stay tuned as you will hear more information about this new class that would open up in the new year we also had a teens ministry that we had in the previous year but this year the teens ministry has grown from strength to strength mm. we have sunday spaces for our teens to leave the service after worship to go into a place where they're taught um, and spaces where they feel seen and known and heard. Mm. Uh, we also have a Teen Culture Friday space, which happens once a month, where our teens come together um, to fellowship with one another, have fun. And these spaces have been a great blessing to the teens within our, 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 our church, as well as our church at large. Uh, we also had the Young Adults Ministry, which we formed recently. That is another praise point where we have a space that is geared towards reaching young adults those between the ages of 18 and 33, single or married or married with kids, a space for them to do life together, to engage with God's word and to be prepared to be connected, inspired and transformed by the gospel. We also have D groups. In the previous year, we piloted five D groups. This D groups are basically discipleship groups where three or four people meet together to study God's word as they do life together. But in this year, we've multiplied to 12 new groups. Um, that is a praise point, a real blessing for our church, or the people of our church, where they can be in spaces where they can learn more about God as they engage the Bible. And we are already looking at opening up more groups as more people desire to be part of our D groups. We also launched growth groups, which is two groups that are geared specifically at particular spaces of growth. We, we launched a marriage growth group and a parenting growth group. And between the two groups, there's 20 people that form part of these mm. groups. And that's another blessing and praise yeah. point. So many reasons in which we can praise praise the Lord. Our Sonke Women's Ministry has also grown from strength to strength. In this year, regular devotions, monthly devotions in the park have been started. A space where our women are able to gather together um, to hear from God's word, to be encouraged, to share a breakfast on the go as they grow into women that God would desire them to be in. We've also ended off the, the year sort of with a big event, a Women's Day event, where our women were able to get together, create crafts, hear from God's word, fellowship with one another, a whole day space in which that was a blessing to all the women of our church. Our men's ministry has also grown from strength to strength, where we have men that gather together, have breakfast once a quarter, and as they do that, um, what we've seen is many men saying that they didn't think this was a space for them but once they came they realized that they could journey with other men as they desire to be men that god has called within the spaces that god has placed them we launched courses a space where we teach specific things within modules um, and that's also seen people join and participate in these courses and we've also had leadership development. We've had AQ and PQ. Uh, we are a church that believes in the fivefold ministry. We've had the apostles as well as the prophets, those gifted in this particular way, join specific spaces of teaching to learn how to better utilize their gift and how to use the gift that God has entrusted them within the body of the church. And we've seen um, 16 people form Co combined within these two groups and we've seen these people lead these groups equipped to serve the body of Christ as leaders within the church. You would have seen me smile as Lesejo shared all of these things because I remember all of the meetings we had where we discussed these things and many of our meetings sounded like this. Guys, we need a new class. <laughs> Guys, we had a full Sunday. <laughs> Guys, we really need a new class. And I mean, that was an awesome challenge we'll to have this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then also, we had many meetings in which we said, let's try it. And if it works, we go for it. And if you think of the teens, if you think of the D groups, um, even if you think of the, the, the women's ministry and the men's ministry, so many of the things we said, we feel this is what we're called to do. Let's see if it works. And then we revert back and we meet and we go, ah, it worked. Yeah. We have to launch it. And we have to go for it. Um, I feel really blessed yeah. if, if I just reflect on it in that way. Uh, this year also saw covenant commitment. You guys might remember that. This was the first time that we had a formal commitment 
of our church people to our vision, our ministries, and participating in it for a specific period of time. So we asked and we invited everyone to make a commitment for 12 months towards our vision and our ministries. Uh, we had a significant number of people make covenant commitment, which we're really thankful for. And we are going to do it again next year, uh, just maybe in a different time. Um, and then our people who committed this year will be able to renew and people who haven't committed will be able to make a commitment for the first time. And we are very, very excited about that. Not going to tell you all about that now. You're going to have to stay tuned for that one. And then lastly, we praise God for everyone we got to baptize this year. So all the people we saw come to faith and all the people we saw baptized is a sign that faith is alive and well in a church. And uh, we are blessed and we thank God and we praise him for the baptisms that we could have seen this year as well. Happy birthday, Fellowship City. What a joy. Yeah, yeah. Um, grateful for the year that's passed, excited for the year to come. And once again, just maybe you might have missed it in the beginning. Verse 6 of Philippians 1. I'm sure of this. It says that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Praise God. Let's go for it.